Gonna start this vlog with a haircut transformation. My beard rises up my cheeks. Hairy neck. I found on prep I was doing one haircut and one beard trim a week. Now in off season it feels like once every three or four weeks. I don't know. And then sometimes I catch myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh for fuck's sake. Like, I just look, I look like I care less about my image. That isn't necessarily a bad thing. I just don't like how I look. So I need to go and sort it out. Oh. <laughs> That's better, right. Yeah, off season is very easy to get sidetracked and I'll go over a bit of that over this video. And I've got an idea as well that I think is gonna work out. It's gonna involve some good imagination from me and hopefully it's gonna be a good visual to get across a point that I think I wanna cover in this video. Also, I think I'm gonna get some training footage as well. Check-in day tomorrow so I can show you where I'm at with that as well. Better have a shave because also, pretty hairy there as well. So without further ado, so today's lecture, and it is a lecture, is, sorry, it's a TED talk actually. Should we call it a TED talk? No, it's not that good. Right, very basic, but hopefully it gets across my point. I mentioned before that I wanted to do something that had like a bit, quite a good visual for people to understand a certain methodology that's used when dieting and training. Okay. I've included cardio and food. I haven't included training as well, but I guess that, would, that could be another one. But for the purposes of this lecture, I'm just gonna use these two. Okay. The reason why, Food started at a certain level and cardio is certain, started at a certain level when you start to diet and train. What tends to happen with people is they'll start thinking that they need to diet. So what they do is they'll reduce their food down to baseline and they'll increase their cardio. Oh, and what this will leave you with, not very many places to go. We're adaptive creatures and over time, the same stimulus no longer has the same effect. A bit like you get an uh, a tolerance to a certain drug or something. Over time, the same dosage doesn't work, so you need to increase the dose or lower dose or something to elicit new change. If day one of your diet starts like this, okay, cool. Let's say one week goes down and you start seeing change, but then after week two, week three, there's a stall and you need to make a change. Okay, cool, where'd you go? All right, well, let's try and keep a bit of food, but we increase the cardio. Okay, cool. Keep going again, so we're gonna start eliciting more change, so then, Another week goes and we do see a little bit of change. And then after week, like week four, week five, you're really hungry because you know that this isn't gonna feel good. This amount of food is not gonna feel good. And this amount of cardio is gonna be not only time consuming, but again, it's not gonna feel good combined with the low food. So where do we go? Right, next change is coming off. It's food, so we need to make a change because again, we've stalled. As I say, we're adaptive creatures. So now we're here. Still got a little bit of food. Now you're really miserable. Another week goes by and you're just about hanging on. And then another couple of weeks and you need to make another change. Right, what are you gonna do? Let's add some more cardio. It's not sustainable. What we'll do is we'll remove some food. Now where'd you go? So now you're five or six weeks deep and there's nowhere to go. Arnie's looking at me funny. Sorry mate. Anyway, I had to remake these because they were fucked. Instead of starting as we did before, imagine this is now your starting point. Food is as high as possible to still elicit fat loss. However, <laughs> it's annoying. Not so high that you are now in a surplus. This is gonna make you feel better. For so many reasons. Recovery's gonna be better, training's gonna be better, mood's gonna be better. You're just generally gonna be enjoying yourself more because you get more food to eat. Personally, I like to start people on either no cardio or very little cardio. This is not playing ball. Now things are a lot more manageable. Again, we're adaptive creatures. Things start to stall and you need to see, you need to make another change. You've got plenty of tools to play with. So there's lots of cardio to ride. So let's keep the food nice and high because you like food. And then cardio in. You've increased the output, so you're gonna see some change now. Still at a pretty decent level. A couple of weeks go by, and another change. So maybe you could do this. And if you notice now, it's basically like a seesaw effect. Food goes down, cardio goes up. If you want to go into a surplus, obviously the cardio will go down and the food go up. But obviously, you know, we're talking about fat loss right now. Plenty of tools to play with. So now, again, a few weeks go by. Progress, progress, progress. And I guarantee you, with more food, you're still going to be progressing in your gym, which we don't have the training one here. It would be here. But you're still going to be progressing because there's plenty of food in your system. So it's going to be, give you plenty of energy, plenty of capability to recover. So need a new stimulus because you started to stall again. More cardio. 
but again, it's still manageable. It's not to the point where it's unmanageable anymore. I think you can kind of get where I'm going with this. But you've still got plenty of tools to play with. Week on week on week, you can still go, 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 go. And my point is, you've got plenty of, you've got plenty of scope to play with. That even several months down the line, you're still at a decent enough level that it's not unmanageable. The take home point is, don't start things at Mac 10. That's not even a thing. Let me try again. Um, so instead, don't chuck the kitchen sink at everything and start with everything. That's an expression. It is an expression. Google it. Anyway, just <laughs> start everything to the Mac. <laughs> Why can't I get this bit? If you start with low food, you're going to be fucked. If you start with high cardio, you're going to, damn it, that didn't work. High cardio, you're going to be fucked. Anyway, I think I might have just put it on the plug socket there. Well, it's down here, so sure. You understand my point? So food and cardio at a manageable level from the off. Make it manageable, that's bloody lovely. <laughs> and the goal is always about sustainability. If you're doing something that does give fast results, but it's not sustainable, we know that's not good because results take time. You know, nothing happens in a two, three week period. Well, hold on, let me rephrase. Things do happen in that time, but not a great deal. True lasting results take time. The thing that you can do for longer because it's more enjoyable, more sustainable, is gonna be better in the long run. So there is method to the madness and it's not just be as lean as possible, as fast as possible, although that would be a dream. If it was just a simple case of don't eat as much and do loads of cardio, then I wouldn't have a job. Anyone can do that. But the idea, as I say, is to make it sustainable over a longer period of time. There's nothing quite like eating in off season when you're not hungry. But this is how you make a difference because if you're always in your comfort zone, then you're never gonna change. So you either moan about it or you can do something about it. And I know which one I want. I want next year to step on stage and know that I gave it my best in off season to bring something more competitive onto the pro stage. And I have lost count of the amount of times that people say, oh, you're so lucky you get to eat so much. Trust me, trust me on this one. It ain't that fun when you have to eat mass food every single day. And it's not pizza and chocolate, it's food, 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 as in actual food, not fucking processed shit. I'm not so lucky. I built my body up to be this big, but now I've got to deal with the consequences. And that means eating a fuck ton of food. So just bear with me while I'm bored off my tits waiting for my potatoes to cook. And this is actually meal five, so I've got another meal after this one. And here's the thing. What did you do that for? I thought I could chew quicker. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, that, Jesus, that is long. Okay. I don't believe that a lot of my clients are necessarily telling the truth. Now, I don't want to point the finger at anyone, but they'll be like, yeah, I smashed the food, smashed the food, and done this, done that, and, uh, you know, feel free. It probably seems quite negative to say that, but in reality, I don't think a lot of people do. I think sometimes there's actually that program called Secret Eaters where people just eat without even realizing it. There's, they have like people following them. Anyway, I'm digressing. I'll finish. I just kind of get. <laughs> I'm poorly. I've got a shit spine and you've just turned off my kettle. Wait a sec. Like literally a sec. Most people that you know, I guarantee. Don't really get any any bigger year on year. Like they kind of just hover around the same sort of size all the time, and that's because the hardship eating so much food to cause growth. People just sort of eat for comfort, or biting down they might sneak the odd meal here and there and everywhere. In reality, the consistent day after day is what makes a difference. Here we are in the morning. I haven't shaved because I can't really be bothered. The razor wasn't charged, so it's not happening. As I spoke about yesterday, some things tend to fall by the wayside in off-season and it's something that I'm encountering quite a lot with a lot of my clients. I don't know if there's another thing that you can pay for and then the person that you paid has to chase you to get the service done. Finding it quite a lot at the moment, a lot of my clients 
they're just not being that punctual with check-ins and they're not really taking it seriously and crazy and I hope some of them watch this and realize that you as much as I get on with all of you and I've even sparked friendships up with some of you really make me want to pull my hair up and I don't have much of it you just check in just your end of the deal is you check in and my end of the deal is I make changes and adjustments according to that and when you don't like what you're looking at it's still important to stay accountable and stay on the ball as much as it's not as intense as a prep it's still really fucking important and how this off season goes is going to determine how the prep goes anyway without further ado I'm going to weigh myself and then go through the mandatories yeah here we go on how I look. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's certainly not the, my preferred look. But if you're someone who claims to take this seriously, you need, that doesn't just apply for when you enjoy things. There are some moments and some things that you don't particularly like, but you do them anyway because you want the overall end result. One day at a time, just making sure I tick it off, next year should be better. And remember, it's the small details, even when they seem insignificant, they make up the big details. So, mainly insignificant meals, those moments, those reps, those sets, that extra meal you had out, that extra night out you had with your mates that add up to the big picture. And it's so easy to get sidetracked in the off season because there's not that immediate need. There's not that like, that urgency that's on this at the moment. It's how many people do you know who are truly putting on a lot of muscle? They're not, they're sort of just hover around similar to what they've got, but they don't really put on kilos of muscle. That takes a long, long time and you have to be resilient. You have to be not detracted easily, not sidetracked easy. It's just something that takes time and most people are not willing to do that time. Hey buddy, how you doing mate? Apology. It is so late getting back to you mate. Have a day. I'm so tired. Um, for you mate, um, another successful week. I know it's been tough with Amy in hospital, so it could potentially be why weight's potentially shot up. A bit cortisol, you know what I mean? Uh, the need to change that. Um, you're sleeping a lot, very much like myself mate. I am so uh, tired in the morning and struggling to take cows as you. I think four, five. Feedback from Martin going into a cruise phase now, which I'm gonna touch on a little bit more tomorrow because right now me and Amy have just got to an Airbnb because actually tomorrow she is gonna be shadow judging for the PCA. So she's looking to start becoming a proper judge to judge the PCA show. So it's pretty exciting. Now we're gonna wind down, but there's still two more meals to eat, but I'm gonna get those in and then I'm gonna explain tomorrow the next step, which is a cruise phase. Time and time again, people seem to think that raw eggs have some like inherent muscle building capabilities, but actually the bioavailability, as in how much your body can utilize, of well, the nutrients are actually reduced when it's raw. So raw eggs are not better than cooked eggs. For some reason, there is a lot of you out there that'll be watching this thinking raw eggs is better. Now, maybe, I don't know, I blame Rocky. I think the Rocky films really does like raw eggs or something. Maybe that's it, but a lot of people have seemed to assume that raw eggs are the way to go. The only reason they did that is because of time. I'm a little bit short on time this morning. That's what got me quicker. I was only big enough for three eggs, but I needed five, so two went in raw. Oh, Step it to your right. At the front. Mm. Yeah, so what I wanted to talk about was cruising. 
And what is a cruise? Really easy. I wanted to talk about what a cruise is. I think when you're in the bodybuilding circle, whatever, you end up saying things and you assume that people know what they are. Now there's probably people watching this knowing exactly what a cruise is, but I'll explain now for those that don't know. Now a cruise is referring to your steroid cycle. And it's a cruise because it's, you're taking your testosterone levels down to a low dose. And the reason being is to get your health markers in check. Just use myself as the example. So right now, I'm using testosterone at 500 milligrams a week and I'm using Prima Bolin. I've ju Martin just put me up to 800 gram milligrams a week, but I was on 600 milligrams for all intents and purposes. The 800 was for the final like two weeks. That many synthetic hormones into my body, then trying to get an accurate blood reading is gonna be quite a minefield. So instead, what you do, reduce it right down to, and I'm gonna go on to a 150 milligrams a week, which is my cruise dose. And that's eight weeks from this point. Around the six to eight week mark, I'm gonna get my blood work done. And that's gonna give me a more accurate reading. Diet, training, everything's gonna be at a pretty decent level. And then whatever needs to be addressed will be addressed. My body is gonna be less responsive. A bit like the video earlier, when you do something for a long period of time, you build up a bit of a tolerance. So in order for me to get my androgen receptors a bit more responsive again, you take things down. And it's just not really wise to be pushing like 365 days a year. So instead you do a cruise, then a, what is known as a blast, where you put the higher levels in. Cruise, blast, cruise, blast. And it's just about giving yourself a fighting chance, trying to do it sensibly, rather than just blasting all year round, which is what you'll find a lot of people do. And also to give a shout out to some of Amy's old students who said that they watch the videos and that they find them informative. And that's the goal with these. For people that I know, and I won't name any names, but they just make videos and it's just like generic bullshit. Whereas actually I wanna try and, if you watch an episode of my YouTube, then you'll actually learn something, hopefully. Maybe you won't and you know it all, <laughs> that's great. But if you learn something, then it makes me happy to be able to try and impart knowledge and information that's gonna be useful to newer bodybuilders. Anyway, the reason why I wanted you in the video is because I just wanted you to introduce the fact that you are judging and what the plan is right. Yesterday I did my first ever shadow judging with the PCA and it was absolutely amazing and then I had the opportunity to do it. Submitted my results now to the PCA for them to be reviewed. If I can do that four times and I have that experience under my belt and my judging is good enough then hopefully I'll be included in the panel and I'll be a qualified PCA judge. That might actually be as early as uh, the finals, so October this year which will be absolutely amazing. It's so different seeing the athletes right there in front of your face. You can literally smell the protan and it just gives you a completely different perspective. Being in the bodybuilding industry quite a while, um, you really do get a feel for what you're looking for. However, when you are faced with a massive category in front of you, your brain is just in overdrive and you've, you've got to sit there and you've got to go, right, bam, 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 pick out, pick out the top athletes, which was really nice to actually see if I could match uh, with what the, the head judge and the other judges were calling out. It's so difficult when you have two athletes in front of you and they're both of incredible standard, but for example, one of them has great condition through the legs, but not through the delts and arms, and someone else, it's vice versa. So it's almost like, you know, who do you reward? Who do you penalise? So, all in all, fantastic experience and I've waffled loads and you can edit as much as you want. And before I round off this video, this that's Arnie's happy birthday. We don't want to get rid of it. It was on March the 31st and it's still going now. <laughs> There's one more thing I just want to say on that subject. A lot of people will be like, this person was robbed. That person should have won. This person, blah, blah. I tell you one thing, until you are there, and I don't mean there at the back of the audience, they're right there, right at the front of the audience. You can't fully tell. I'm convinced of it. I'm convinced of it. How photos look can be manipulated a little bit. Like if you catch one person slightly out of pose or one person in pose, but full condition can only be seen when you're physically there. You can definitely see it to a degree in photos and videos. Of course you can, and you can make a pretty good assessment, but it's clear and night and day when you're right there. You can see absolutely everything. Yeah. The, the tiny tremors, you can see hairs on people. You can see absolutely everything. 
because they were right up there. <laughs> <laughs> and the standard yesterday was awesome. I'm not being biased because it was a first shot. No, that was like good. Good, but... that was good. The next time you see a photo and you're like, that person was robbed. This person should have won. Even in the pro levels, mm. pro shows, that person should have beat that person. Until you're there, I'm telling you, I am telling you, you do not fully know. But anyway, round up this video. That's enough for today. So tune in for the next one. I'm not sure when it'll be. In off season, it feels a little bit harder to do, but I'm still going to keep it up. So thanks for watching.